Hello, hello. Mowgli, I'm not talking to you. Come here, oops. Come here, oops. <laughs> hello, people. I'm finally back on another live stream. It's been a couple of weeks. I kind of just, I actually didn't really mean to take time off of live streaming and stuff, but I feel like I think it was the week of Christmas and I didn't want to hop on a live stream one because I had my own stuff to do. And then also I knew like a lot of you guys were probably spending time with family and you weren't going to come on. So I didn't even bother with the live streaming. And then last week has just been crazy. I was like out of town. And then now that I'm back home, just so stressful. I was like working so much and like editing so many different videos. I ended up, um, giving myself probably like the worst migraine of my life. I've never really had migraines up until this last year. And I think it's because I spend so much time now like on my computer and in front of like the screen. And I ended up having a migraine for like three days straight. So <clears throat> as you guys can probably hear, I'm like a little bit under the weather. Um, I had, I ended up having to take like three days off of work straight. So this is like the longest I've ever gone without working, without editing, without filming anything. Um, you guys probably know I missed my Monday upload because I was like sick pretty much. So yeah, um, I just kind of thought I'd get back on a live stream, start off the new year. <laughs> um, no more, no more migraine, hopefully. But I'm just kind of kicking it in bed today still. I have to take things a little bit slow because I don't want to jump right back into things and then end up hurting myself again. But before any of you guys ask, I'm currently working on, it's taken me a bit of a minute. So in case you're watching, I'm oh, I'm working on the 30, was it 30K giveaway? So the nice young lady that won the giveaway said she wanted a flame pattern bag. So, you know me, I took too long, but now I'm finally finishing it up. This is the second panel. So hopefully today I can just get it done. I'm also trying, um, I'm not, <clears throat> I still don't like have a TikTok or anything. I know a lot of people have been telling me to go get a, start a TikTok and I haven't done it, but I have been trying to get into reels on Instagram. So I'm trying to turn this flame bag into a reel right now. So, so time consuming, like having to stop your work to film. It doesn't seem like a lot of work, but it's like, I have to get my whole filming set up. I have like, you know, I have to set everything up just to film like 10 seconds and then put everything away and then actually like work on it again. But yeah, I'm just trying to um, finish up this bag because I'm like, I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, guys. I just want to like catch you up on so many things. It's been like two weeks since I've live streamed. But uh, a video that's going out tomorrow. Another side note, <laughs> I'm like all over the place. I usually post on Mondays and Thursdays. But for whatever reason, like a new year, I kind of want to try out a new schedule and I'm only changing my schedule by a day. So in case, you know, like the actual days matter to you guys, I will be uploading videos now, I think on Wednesdays and Sundays. So still two times a week, but I'm just changing up the days a little bit. Um, so in tomorrow's video, I'm talking about like things that I have planned for this next year. And you guys will probably see it there. But after I finish up this flame, flame bag, I almost said flame vest. After I finish up this flame bag, I'm going to start working on the patchwork subscriber card again. Finally. I know it's taken me so long. It probably didn't help that I got a little bit sick, but I'm finally going to start working on it this week. I'm so excited. I feel a little bit overwhelmed because I know there's like 300 something patches. So I'm going to be filming two separate videos. The first one is going to be the actual cardigan, patchwork cardigan. And then the second video will be me putting together all of the giveaway items with the leftover patches. So... Now that I've finished rambling, I can, <laughs> hi everybody. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. So last minute, I know I never plan these things out. 
But yes, Happy New Year, everybody. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in again. Nilka, hello. Thank you for literally hopping on here like within the first minute. I love seeing all these returning names. Hi, JD Roberts. Moonwalker. Micaiah, hello, Micaiah. Yay, caffeine. So awesome. Sierra Jordan, this is your first time jo joining. Well, thank you for hopping on. Um, for all of you guys who are new here to my live streams, sorry, my necklaces are just like all tangled. For everybody that's new here, um, I have this nasty habit of like never really planning when I'm going to live stream. It's always like a last minute thing because I never really know like what my day is going to be like day to day. So whenever I can find a minute, I just start a live stream. So if you guys are able to join me, you know, last minute, thank you for hopping on here. <clears throat> Marianne and Sierra, you guys said, how did you do the pattern? I want to get into graph GANs so bad. My best advice for you, and this is how I do it. I haven't done a lot of graph GANs, but especially like when it comes to this flame pattern, it's a lot of trial and error. And I know you guys don't want to hear that, but let me try to show you guys. Um, so step number one is I always print out like an Excel Excel spreadsheet. So I'll show you the pattern in a second, but usually I literally just go and I'll like mark out roughly how many stitches wide and how many rows I think my pattern is going to be. And this is always just a rough estimate for me, but yeah, I always print out like an actual spreadsheet and then I'll go in with um, a pencil and whatever design I'm trying to make, I will physically draw the design onto the graph and then from there, I can actually go in and like fine tune what stitches are going to be what color. So if you guys look here, this is kind of the newest pattern that I have here because I don't want to replicate the same exact flame pattern that I had for the vest. Um, and also this bag is going to be a smaller width than the vest itself. So as you guys can see here, if you look really closely, you can actually see the physical like line that I drew. I don't know if you guys can see it. But if you guys can like look really close, you can actually see like the beginning line that I drew. And then after that, like I said, I went in and fine tuned exactly what cells or what boxes were going to be what color. And this is the tricky part is like it might look really, really good on your graph. <clears throat> like, for example, this was the first. Actually, no, this is this is the second one. So the first one that I drew up, I thought it looked really good and it looked great. And then I ended up making the pattern. Let's see where it is. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It looks so bad. Okay. See, I'm, I'm even going to show you guys. Like, even for me, a lot of things are like trial and error. So the first pattern that I drew up, it looked really good on the graph. And then I worked it up. And it, I'll admit it, it does not look good. Like you can kind of tell that they're flames. But after I worked out the pattern, I realized my flames were really short and really skinny. And that's not what I wanted. So this was trial and error number one or like number two. So then I went back to my graph. I reprinted out a new graph. And then I sketched out, this is my third shoot, this might be my third. So then I had to go back again and I remade new flames. And I think it looks not too bad here on the graph. Um, I think one thing you have to keep in mind is what kind of stitch you're going to use. I think my pattern would have come out looking a lot better if I used single crochet. Um, it would look a lot more accurate, but because I was using double crochet, you have to imagine that all your cells here, all your boxes are going to be taller than what's represented here on your pattern, which is why all of these flames looked so skinny and tall because I was using double crochet. So this was failed attempt number one. As you guys can see, I literally just stopped it because I was like, this is hideous. I'm not working on this anymore. Started over. That was number three. I worked this one up and it's not bad. I, I'm going to use this panel. But I think the way that it came out was I added too many flames. So then from there, I went back, printed out a new Excel spreadsheet. Like I said, guys, it takes like a lot of bucking up to get it right. So then this is my fourth design. And I know it might not look as pretty as the other ones. But again, keep in mind that because I'm using the double crochet, 
all of this is actually going to scrunch up a little bit more and look a little bit taller. So you have to kind of keep in mind how your stitches are going to alter like the final look. So this is the one that I'm actually working on right now, the one that I just showed you. And as you guys can see, it's coming out a lot better and I'm a lot more happy with this one. So yeah, this is the second side, second panel. So once I get this panel all finished up, I can actually stitch the two ones together and then add the handles and everything. Holy moly, there are 47 people here in this live stream. I love how you guys are able to just come on here at last minute. So yeah, a little bit of a long explanation, but um, I know so many people have been asking, you know, how I do the flame pattern. And that's honestly how I do it. Every time I make a pattern, it's different. I never really use the same exact template because you know, different sizes, whether you're small or an extra large, or you're making a 10 inch bag, or you're making a huge 25 inch bag, like it, it always varies. So you really need to change your pattern depending on what you're making. So yeah, that's how I did it. Just printed an Excel spreadsheet, roughly drew out what I wanted my flames to look like. And then I went back in with a pencil and an eraser and marked out things. And trust me, I went in several times and erased one little box here or added one little box there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a lot of, it's very time consuming. And I thought I was gonna get this flame bag finished, I wanna say like five days ago, and then I got sick. And then it just like postponed everything. And like with my migraine, I wasn't even able to like watch Netflix. Like I couldn't even like look at my computer screen because just the brightness hurt so bad. So I physically couldn't even really like be on my phone, couldn't even watch Netflix, couldn't, crochet I just had to like lay down so yeah a little bit of a setback here at the beginning of the year but it was kind of just like my cue to um like take a moment for myself and like slow down yeah <laughs> <clears throat> um I'm not sure who said this because the name it just says name here Maybe that's the name that you chose, but you said, how do you get confident wearing your own clothes? I feel so judged wearing the more trendy crochet items that tend to show off more skin. I feel like there's not really like, there's not really like an exact tip I can give to that. Um, all I really can say to that is you just like fuck like other people. It's kind of just like, if you like the item that you made, you should wear, you know, like what was the point of making it? If you can't wear it yourself and show it off, um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not confident all the time. Like my confidence sometimes is like skyrocketed and I'm like, hell yeah, I look so great in this crochet bikini that I've worn. And then sometimes I make other things and like, I, if I'm like trying to film it, you know, out in public, I, I can get really self-conscious too. Like, oh my gosh, all these people are looking at me. I feel really self-conscious. I feel embarrassed. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I feel like it's really obvious, but it's just, you really just have to kind of find the confidence in yourself. And something that I've really learned recently, um, having to film more in public, like the last couple of weeks, I have just literally been like in public with my camera out, just like talking to my camera. And I feel like just the more you do it, the more confident you become. Um, and like to go along with that, something I've learned is other people really don't care. Like, like for the most part, like it kind of depends like where you live. Like if you like live in like LA or like huge cities, maybe people are more judgy. Maybe people will like look at you more. But for the most part, I've noticed that when I'm out filming and talking to my camera and like literally people are walking by me, they don't care. So I feel like that's something you should really keep in mind is like, you're going to be your harshest, harshest critic. So like when you're out there trying to take photos or just like wear your items that you've made, chances are 99% of the people that you're around, they're not focused on you. Like in their head, they are the main character in their life. They're their main character in their own show. So they're not even busy looking at you. Like they might like look at you for a second and glance like, oh wow, that sweater is really colorful. Or like, oh whoa, that skirt's really crazy looking, like whatever you made. But for the most part, they're not gonna sit there and stare at you and judge you like, wow, that's ugly. Wow, she looks bad in that. Ooh, that doesn't shape her boobs well. You know, like they really don't care. I was at, um. I was at like a plant nursery, I want to say like a week ago. And 
I had to get some clips done and I wanted to film. So I was literally walking around this nursery. It's like outdoor and indoor. I'm like walking around this nursery. I brought my entire tripod and my camera, no joke, my entire tripod to the nursery. And I'm like, I'm like taking like five minutes to like pull out the legs, set it up, get the camera right. And I, I'm literally having like couples that are like 60 years old walking by me. They like look at me for one second. I'm like, okay, whatever. Oh, look at this plant. You know, like they didn't care. And I'm like setting things up. I start recording. I'm like holding up the plant. I'm talking to the camera, completely ignoring everybody walking by me. I can see the workers at the nursery look at me for a second and then walk away. Like they're just looking over like, oh, what's going on here? And then they see that I'm filming and they don't want to interrupt. They don't care. So they just kind of go on about their day. So again, another like really long explanation, but I feel like it just kind of comes with partial practice. And then partial, just kind of realizing that like in your head, because you're the main character in your own life, you're worried that other people are going to judge you. And then in turn, that makes you feel self-conscious. And I know I've literally said it like 10 times at this point, but every time I go out to film, I will say 50% of the people hear me filming and talking and they don't even look at me. They don't even care. And then the other 50% will glance at me for a second to see what I'm doing. And then they just keep on walking. So just kind of keep in mind that you should be doing it for you. If like you want to wear something, do it for you. Don't do it or don't do something because you're worried what other people are going to think or make fun of you or judge you. Just wear whatever you want to wear because it makes you happy and like it excites you. Yeah, that's like my, if anybody else has any other tips like on how to feel more confident, please help them out here. Um, I feel like another good tip would just be like start small. Start with um, you know, maybe like a, a handmade crochet bag that you've worn and then like wear it out. Cause it's still like, you know, you're showing off something that you've made. And then from there, maybe you can up the ante and wear a cardigan that you made. And then from there, after you kind of worn it out a few times and you start to realize like either people don't really care what you're doing or they're going to compliment you on it. And then after that, you're like, okay, I can wear this really cute bralette that I made or this really cute mini skirt. Um, but maybe just like start small, start with small items, something that's not too flashy. And then once you get comfortable, like showing off your stuff, you can like wear it more. When I first started wearing stuff out, I used to be really self-conscious. And then after a few more times, people started walking up to me just to stop me and be like, oh, hey, I just want to like let you know, like I like your skirt is really, really cute and I really like it. And then you just take the compliment and you're like, oh, thank you. I made it. And they're like, wow, that's really cool. And then they go on their way. And then once you get a couple compliments, you're like, oh, shit, like, this is pretty cool, you know? Nishida, hi. Hi, Natasha. Oh, 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 yeah, Nilka is suggesting Stitch Fiddle. I used that when I first ever tried making, like, a graph gan. And yeah, she's right. All you have to do is like, if you have, I've literally used like downloaded images from Google and uploaded it to Stitch Fiddle. And then it literally marks it out for you on a graph. Hi, Jade. Jade said, hey, Erin, how are you? My question is not about crochet, but I'd like to know what is your best life advice? Well, thank you, Jade, for asking me how I am. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better today. Um, the last few days have been really rough. Trying to just like heal myself and like get healthy and for once, like not work. And that's like really hard for me because I'm kind of like when it comes to like YouTube and like making videos, I'm a workaholic. So I figured I would like ease my way back into working with like an easy live stream. So I'm feeling a lot better today. But this is an interesting question. You said, what is your best life advice? I know everybody's going to have like different advice, obviously. I want to say for me, like from what I've learned, if I could like change anything in my past, best life advice would be if there's something that you're even like remotely interested in doing, like not even crochet, just like anything, any hobby, anything fun in your life. I would say do it and don't question yourself. Like I've spent a lot of time, like even before I started making my YouTube, I want to say I spent 
like three months on and off, just wondering if I should make a YouTube. And I was so, I, I think I was so like, I don't want to say concerned, but I was just really hoping to get people's approval. And thankfully, like when I was talking to my mom or my best friend, Emily, they were telling me, like I'd mentioned, I, I, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I made a YouTube? And they would tell me like, yeah, yeah, you really should. Um, but in general, I think I, I was just so nervous about like putting myself out there in general. And it's something that I deep down, I was really interested in doing, but I think I was just hoping for like a lot of people to like tell me, oh, you should like kind of kiss my ass, you know, and tell me, oh, it's going to be great. You should do it. You should do it. Um, it's kind of like people pleasing. I'm kind of like going on a tangent here, but I just want to say do things for you and not for other people. I spent a good portion of my time of like my life doing a lot of things to like impress other people, doing a lot of things to like get other people's acceptance. Um, and like even something like with my YouTube, I put it off for like three or four months before I even made my YouTube. Um, even though it was something I really, really wanted to do. Yeah, I don't know. Just in general, don't hold back. If there's something, anything at all that you're interested in doing, I'd say jump on it. Don't wait for other people's approval. Don't wait for other people to agree with you and tell you that it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, Obviously, you don't like go jumping off a bridge if you think that's a good idea. That's a bad idea. But, you know, just in general, um, like there's so many things recently, like in this last year, small things, but things that like I've wanted to do that like bring me like a lot of joy and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very like generic life advice. But I would just say if there's anything at all that brings you happiness and joy um, don't hold back. I'd say just jump into it. Just do it. Yeah. Emma R. Love your tutorials, girl. So easy to follow and super creative. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. McKinley said, what are your tips for getting better at crochet? So like there's a lot of different ways that you could just in general like improve your crochet skills. I want to say something that really helped me improve myself. There's kind of like two things. First and foremost, I would say you have to try different like patterns and stitches. I've mentioned this a ton of times before on my channel. But for like the first 10, 14 years that I was crocheting, all I ever used were single crochet or double crochet. And all I ever made were scarves and blankets. And that's why literally up until the last like two years of my life, my crochet was pretty much unevolved. Um, I mean, I spent, you know, 10 plus years just doing double crochets and single crochets and just making rectangles, you know, just straight up scarves. So after 10 years, you know, I should be pretty, pretty good at like pretty developed at making those kind of items. But once I started, honestly, for me, like my growth really came from YouTube and that was before I even made a YouTube, um, just searching different things like crop tops, cardigans, dresses, um, bags, making bags, even stuff like home decor, once I started like searching around, like being interested in making other things besides just scarves and baby blankets, I started noticing how skilled I was at it. Like everybody's skilled at things. You probably just don't realize it until you attempt it. So once I, 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 I want to say like three or four years ago, maybe like three years ago, I went on a binge. Like I was obsessed with looking at different like crop tops because it was like middle of summer so I was just youtubing like DIY like crochet off shoulder crop top crochet long sleeve sweater like it doesn't matter what it is but I just got obsessed with like seeing other people's creations and YouTube helped a lot because a lot of times people give you know an actual tutorial so I feel like you kind of have to get out of your comfort zone for me my comfort zone was the scarves and the blankets 
But once I started looking at different things like how to make a, a shoulder bag, how to make crop tops, how to make um, yeah, cardigans, dresses, and you actually force yourself to do it, I don't know, you kind of just, you pick up skills along the way um, and you're able to kind of see like what you're capable of. Um, on top of that, just in general, different stitches, like besides plain, you know, double crochets, half double crochets, I think it's really important to kind of learn different actual like stitch patterns. For example, there's like the, uh, the jasmine stitch. I think it's called like the jasmine flower stitch. And recently I've been obsessed with that. I haven't physically like put it into any of like any of the tutorials that I've been making lately, but that's a gorgeous like stitch pattern that I've been obsessed with lately is like the jasmine flower stitch or even like the star star stitch, something like that. Um, even when I was making baby blankets, I, I learned how to do the waffle stitch. That was a really fun technique. It kind of gives your whatever item that you're working on some texture. My favorite of all time is the shell, the shell stitch. So kind of just like looking, Googling around, trying to learn different patterns, different stitches, and just making different items. Like I literally went, it's like 14, 15 years of my crochet career and I never made a crop top. Like I literally learned how to crochet when I was in the fourth and the fifth grade. And for over 10 years, I never even tried to make a crop top. And then all of a sudden, in the last three years of my life, once I start trying all these new things like crop tops and skirts and and beanies and like everything, you start realizing like how much you could actually accomplish. You kind of just have to find like your niche, like what it is. Let me get my, my coffee. It's almost done. It's almost done. <laughs> Margaret said, hi, Erin. I've been waiting all day for you to come on. I'm watching you and cleaning my kitchen and cooking dinner. Well, I'm glad I could keep you company. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Yeehaw, said OMG, hi. <laughs> Green apples. Hey, Erin, I was just about to go to sleep and then, but then I saw you were live. Just wanted to tell you Happy New Year. Happy New Year, green apples. Mad Art World said, OMG, I already made like five balaclavas. I'm obsessed. That was me. That was me. At first, I mean, I saw a bunch of people making balaclavas. Actually, I, I only saw a few people on like YouTube. And at first I was like, eh, you know, balaclavas are okay. I'm not going to get into that though. Like, I don't think I'll look cute in that. It doesn't interest me. And then over like Christmas, I saw, it's like right before Christmas, I saw how many people were making like knitted balaclavas. So cute. So cute. And then I was like, shit, I have to make one. Like, I really have to make one. So then thankfully I pulled it together in time and got the tutorial out for you guys. But I'm like low-key obsessed with them too. Green apples, that's very sweet of you. They said, congrats on the evolution of your channel. I've been following you for a while already and you definitely deserve your growth. XOXO from Paris, from Paris. Thank you. Hello from Brazil. Ah. Lillian, hi, Erin Love from Chile. That's so awesome. You guys are all able to tune in. 
thank you guys again for like, you know, last minute just hopping on this live stream with me. Um, let me read this one. Okay. Emma O'Connor said, Hey, I followed your balaclava tutorial. Excuse me. <coughs> hey, I followed your balaclava tutorial and I didn't understand how to attach the rows at the top to each side. I always had a hole when skipping a row for the double crochet. So in theory, that is pretty much how it's going to happen. Um, your hole shouldn't be massive, but where is my balaclava? It's not in here. Um, in theory, technically, yes, you are supposed to have a hole, at least the way that I did it and like the way I've done attaching panels like that before. That's essentially how it goes because you have a double crochet, which is, you know, a lot longer than a single crochet. I would say if you're doing a single, you probably wouldn't really have to skip a row. Uh, and have like that hole. But because your double crochet is taller, if, okay, let's imagine, it's hard to kind of show you, but if this is like the length of your double crochet and on the side panel, you know, you've got like say one, two, three, four stitches right here. If you don't skip a row or two right here and you try to attach your double crochet and like you don't want to have that gap and you try to attach it, those rows of double crochet are going to have to like slant down. Like you're really going to be squashing the length of your work to fit. And then, okay, fine. You attached it without skipping a row, chain one, chain two, and start your work. Your work is going to end up, I feel like it's going to kind of do this because along your row, your double crochets are fine. And then you try to attach it. I don't know if I'm explaining this right. It's kind of hard without my actual balaclava here, but that is how my balaclava looked. Um, with half double crochets and double crochets, you kind of do have to leave a stitch or two open and then attach it to like the right height. So wherever your double crochet naturally rests, like when you like lay your work down and you don't have any tension on your hook or anything, wherever, however, however tall those double crochet rows are, realistically, that's where you should be attaching it. So Again, if you've got like one or two rows down here, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to like flatten your work or shorten your work just to connect it because you don't want to have a hole because then now you have to work up this way. I don't know. You, you could try doing it that way um, without skipping any rows. That way you don't have a hole on the sides of like where you're attaching. But I, I promise you, if you work, like halfway through the top of that panel, you're going to see an issue. Um, maybe not. Maybe our tension is like different. So maybe you can get away with it. But I, I have done work like that before where I wasn't skipping any rows. And I promise you my work looked funky. Like I would rather have like a little bit of that gap right there. So I hope I explained that as best as I could. Jesslyn. Jesslyn said, my 2022 resolution is to master knitting. Yo, best of luck to you because I am not a master knitter. And if you're going to come to me for master knitting advice, I don't have it. I'm very much a beginner at knitting. But good luck to you. I am obsessed with knit stuff. I still, there are so many knitting projects that I want to do. Believe me. Um... I just, I just get so caught up with the crochet. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian Georges. I see that you said you're from France. So I don't know how to pronounce that. George, A Adrian George. Sorry if I'm butchering it. Said hi, lot of lots of love from France. I'm currently doing my second balaclava with your tutorial, my first crochet project. Thanks, that's really cool. I'm actually very impressed that your first crochet project ever was a balaclava. They're like not the easiest thing to make in general, beginner friendly, like the tutorial I put out there. But for your first project ever, congrats! I'm like so blown away because like for years I. 
I couldn't even dream of doing a hat like that. Micaiah said, Happy New Year. You probably won't be back by your birthday. So happy birthday. I still have like a week until my birthday. So I think I will be back on here. But thank you for telling me in advance. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing on my birthday yet. So who knows? Maybe I could even live stream on my birthday. I'm not sure. But in case y'all are wondering, it's Capricorn season. And yes, I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> Sorry, it's like so quiet as I just read here. <coughs> Charlotte said, hey, Aaron, this is the first live that I'm watching that is actually live. As I live in the UK, I'm always asleep when you are live. Thank you for saving the lives. Oh, saving the lives, though, so I can still watch later. Yeah, of course. Thankfully, um, YouTube automatically saves it for me and it's just up to me to like publish it. And I feel like, I mean, I do a lot of rambling, but so many people have said that they love watching the live streams back even after I'm done live streaming. So like, why not keep it up there, you know? So I'm so glad that you enjoy watching through my lives. That's crazy. Thank you for tuning in instead of going to sleep. That's dedication, honestly. Oh, Natasha, bye. You said I have to leave now, but you'll watch the live stream later. Bye. Happy New Year. And I will tell Jordan that you said Happy New Year as well. Wow, you guys are so sweet. Brittany, Happy New Year to you as well. Adrian said, actually, I failed the balaclava three times with the other tutorial. And with yours, I did it. And with yours, I did it the first time. Very beginner friendly. The information on the screen of number and stitches helps a lot. Yay! See, I love that. That literally gave me chills. Also, I've been having having chills lately, but that actually gave me chills. That makes me so happy that like you guys are actually able to comprehend my tutorial. Like for me, I try to explain it the best way possible, but I know it's biased because like I already know what I'm talking about. And I never 100% know, you know, for sure if you guys are gonna understand what I'm explaining. So that makes me so happy hearing that you are actually, even like as a literally a first time beginner, you were able to like comprehend the pattern, understand what I was saying and finish the balaclava. That makes me so happy. Tyra. Hi, Tyra Castro. You said crochet projects you're looking forward to and or any new ideas you're thinking of. I need to pull out my list. Where is my list? Um, wait, you know what? Is it on my phone? Honestly, there's a lot of a lot of crochet things I want to get into. And I want to say like weekly. Y'all DM me photos of like new crochet things that you guys want me to try. And I want to do it all. Um, like I just mentioned earlier, I am going to be starting the subscriber patchwork cardigan. So that's coming up. Oh, um, I mean, it's not really like crochet. It's kind of crochet related. But I can give you guys an update on merch. Like a little bit. I don't have a mock-up yet. So I will try to make this ramble as short as possible. It has been decided by the gods above me and completely out of my control that it is up to me to embroider everything myself. Long story short, I did go to um, like, a, like a seamstress slash embroidery place. And essentially they told me that it is possible for them to do the embroidery for me so that I don't have to do it myself. But... They said, unless I'm doing like 500 plus orders, it's going to be ridiculously expensive. Like, like to the point where I will legit be losing a ton of money every single item. 
Um, so yeah, it has been uh, decided against my will that I'm going to have to buy the embroidery, embroidery, blah, 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 the embroidery machine myself and do the embroidery by hand with the machine. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get all the items out. Like I've discussed previously, I think I'm going to do like a pre-order. So I will get a couple items mocked up just the way I want them. And then I will do like a pre-order for all the things. That way I'm not having to like do a bunch of these things in bulk right off the bat. And then as the orders come in, I can make them. So it's a little bit more time convenient. But yeah, I will literally be doing everything in-house. I will literally be doing the embroidery myself. So I'm like, I'm very excited. Don't get it wrong. It's something that I want to do. It's just like a pro con thing. Like I'm going to have a lot of fun being able to say like, I made this. I didn't have like a manufacturer do it. But at the same time, I know it's going to, it's going to take a good chunk out of my day. And then my train of thought that got me there is, um, what you, I mean, the question was like <laughs> any new projects or ideas you're thinking of, like with the whole merch. I finally got all the stuff in to make the handmade crochet hooks. If I could edit this video right now, I would cut into my face because I'm so excited. Um, I know I've already mentioned it like five times in this live stream, but before I ended up getting like sick and getting like a four day migraine, I was legit about to start making all the crochet hooks or at least practice making them and like getting some mock-ups done and then I got set back um but also this next week those are kind of like the two major things I want to do one patchwork cardigan that's this upcoming next week and then also during the week to kind of take some time away from the cardigan that way I don't get overwhelmed I'm going to start making the crochet hooks and I'm so excited I literally have everything in the mail I've looked at everything I have, I just have no words. I'm just like so excited. Um, and I know y'all have been telling me that y'all would really like some gorgeous crochet hooks. And um, yeah, something else I haven't even, cause it's been like, I haven't really been on here since before Christmas. Um, to help me out with my business and everything for Christmas, I received a cricket. So excited. So excited. There are so many things I want to make with the Cricut. Um, but I know I'll have to start small because if I get overwhelmed with like making things and merch, I will completely forget about like making videos and crochet tutorials. But yeah, don't, don't, don't worry your heads. I'm going to keep doing videos, but yeah, I got a Cricut Explore Air 2 for Christmas. And I really wanted it because in general, I feel like the Cricut is really going to help me like personalize a lot of my merch. So like I said, I am starting off my merch with the tote bags and the sweaters and the crochet hooks. And with the tote bags and the sweaters for this first batch, I really want to embroider. I want to do embroidery pretty much with every drop that I do that I'm able to do. I just really like the look of embroidery. It just looks so professional. But to top it off, I feel like the Cricut is really going to help when it comes to like heat transfer vinyls. I've been looking at a ton of other designs and stuff that I can do for later merch, like apparel and whatnot, and even just like bags and stuff. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that I want to use. Like just uh, there's, I, I can't even like get into it cause I'm going to like spoil it for you guys. So, I mean, you guys will see when I get there, but um, yeah, all I'm going to say is holographic holographic merch anybody yeah I'm just really excited um yeah and I've, I think I've mentioned this before too like on my last live stream but some other merch that I really want to get into after this first drop would maybe be some um like coffee tumblers or um like iced coffee like mason jars something along the lines of like a liquid tumbler coffee cup just because you guys know I'm I drink coffee like every day 
Um, so I would love to like personalize some coffee cups and stuff. Yeah, so those are just like some new projects in general. As far as crochet projects go, I feel like I've been telling y'all like all the different things that I want to do. Um, but without getting into it too deep, a big thing that I want to start doing is, in general with my channel is I just want to start two things, incorporating more home decor. I don't really have home decor here on my channel. And this next year, I it is a goal for me to get my own house, move out and get my own house. Um, I want to say hopefully, you know, before Thanksgiving, before the end of the year. And I want to be able to decorate whatever place I end up getting. I want to be able to decorate the whole thing by me. The whole My whole house is going to be me made items. So I really want to do like a lot of home decor style items. Um, right before I got sick, I was literally looking at a bunch of different um, like home decor style yarn um, and just like different projects that I could make. So trust me. Even though I haven't really been active here on YouTube recently, I've been researching a ton of different items. Um, really fun stuff coming this year. I'm like, just with all the things in my head right now, I'm like already overwhelming myself, but I'm really excited. I feel like there's not enough hours in the day. There's not enough days in the week. There's so many things I want to make. What else is I going to say? Oh, and another like, it's not really a project, but another thing I want to start incorporating on my channel is I want to start doing some like yarn reviews. Um, I know it sounds very generic, but there's been a lot of times like in the past few weeks where there's a yarn that I'm interested in using and I don't even, you know, really know how the yarn looks like in person. I only see how the yarn looks on Joanne's website or whatever. So um, I kind of just want to start doing very very simple, simplified yarn reviews where um, whatever new yarn comes out for that season or that month, whether it's Michael's Joann's, Hobby.com, anywhere, Lovecrafts.com, um, I just buy a bunch of yarn that's new, newish, and um, I just review the yarn. I talk about the yarn. I show you guys um, me testing out the yarn, how it works up. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I haven't ever really done that on my channel. I mean, I've done yarn hauls where I talk about the yarn and show it to you guys and talk about what I want to make with it, but it's never really been a full on like review. So I feel like that would be really something really fun. I can start doing maybe like once a month where I just head to the store. You guys can kind of come yarn shopping with me or if I have to order it online and then I show off all the new yarns to you, give you guys all the information, all the details that's listed about the yarn. Um, show you guys real time how it works up, the pros and cons to it, what I would recommend using it for, that kind of stuff. So yeah, yarn reviews and home decor are um, just a slight, not even like new direction, but just like a, another style of video that I want to add into my channel. Malika said, Happy New Year, Aaron. Love you. Love you too. Thank you for supporting me and coming here and listening to me talk. I cannot believe there are 76 people here right now. I feel like that's the most I've ever had. I could be wrong, but. Lily, Lily A said, Hi, Aaron. I am usually in France, but now I can actually watch a live stream. Natalie Crochet is, Hi, how are you doing? What are you working on now, like this week slash month? I mean, you probably just heard, but I mean, right now I always do this. I always start a live stream with crocheting and then I never crochet because I'm so busy talking. But currently I am trying to finish up the 30K giveaway winners item. So the 30K winner said that she wanted a flame pattern bag. So I'm finishing up the second panel to the bag right now. These are my little flames. They're obviously not done yet. I still have I think another 10 or so rows to go. And then I can make the handles. So this is what I'm working on today. I'm taking it slow. Um, I have to take a thumbnail for a video later today. Um, I need to take it easy this week so that I don't relapse into actually getting like legit sick. Um, but yeah, this next upcoming week, I'm going to be working on that subscriber Patrick Cardigan. I was like looking at the bag the other day. I 
feel bad because obviously that bag has been sitting there for like two months. But I have made it a point to literally, literally clear everything from my schedule in terms of like projects. That way I only have one thing to focus on and it is the cardigan. Um, so yeah, this next few weeks is going to be all about the patchwork cardigan and then the patchwork giveaway items. Um, and then I want to say shortly after that, uh, maybe like in two weeks or so. Yeah, something like that. I can finally make that cropped cardigan. Finally. So those are like the two big things on my to-do list for January. Patchwork cardigan, cropped cardigan. And then I'm going to start... I'm going to start sprinkling in some of that uh, home decor. Oh, Natalie, you said you also sent in squares. When did you, did you send in squares and then see your squares um, on that like unboxing video? Because after the unboxing video, I received one package like a week later. So I hope I hope you're telling me like you sent in squares during that time and not after because I haven't received any new squares since then. And I still go to my PO box like once a week. Natalie Marie. That makes me so happy. Let me, my thing just scrolled away. Oh, I'm sorry. He's mad that I'm ignoring him. Sorry, Bobby. Um, and just a quick heads up. I'm probably going to stop the live stream at an hour just because I don't want to push myself. I feel like I need to take a nap, but I'm just going to answer a few more questions. So I'm not going just yet. But Natalie said, my man has like 15 hats. I used your beanie tutorial and made him one for Christmas and it fits so perfect. Tell me why he said it's the most comfortable one he owns and wore it to work and got compliments. That means you killed it. That means you followed the pattern, you got it done, and it looks freaking amazing. I'm so glad he loves it. And honestly, that should be a compliment to you that people are complimenting him on the beanie because you're the one that made it. Kristen, Kristen Kennedy said, hi, new sub here. You should, you should do, uh, you should do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a sweater. So I do have one tutorial on my channel. It is a men's sweater, but if you are kind of like, um, an intermediate crochet, you crochet, you can definitely alter that pattern to fit women's sizes. Um, I kind of just made it like oversized men's. But yeah, if, if you kind of can understand, I can't speak English anymore. That's how you know it's like time to go. If you can like read a pattern and, and like learn how to adjust it or alter it to your size just by doing like less rows. Yeah, go look at my crochet oversized sweater tutorial. Hooked by Suze. Hi, Erin. Thanks again for answering my email on the men's sweater. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help you. I'm sorry it was a little bit late. I'm pretty sure I answered it like a couple days later, but I hope my instructions were able to help you out when you're finishing up your sweater. Hmm. And Kristen, oh, Caitlin, Caitlin Zhang, hi. Hi, I like the little wave. Um, Kristen said, my grandma taught me how to crochet when I was like 10, I'm 27 now, only done simple blankets though. You literally sound like me. I learned to crochet when I was nine, like nine or 10 years old. And I'm 27 right now, I'm about to be 28 next week. Um, and I only ever did scarves and blankets my whole life up until like three years ago. I think it was like three years ago 
I made my first crop top. That was the first time I made something in the whole like 18 years that I crocheted. Finally made a crop top. <laughs> Abigail makes stuff said, I would love yarn reviews. Yes. I already have um I already have some new yarn from Joanne in like my cart in the app. So I just have to bite the bullet and like actually buy the yarn. But there are some really cute new yarn and some people have been recommending it to me, like DMing me, telling me to check it out. So yeah, I just have to buy the yarn. But I'm really excited to do like really just basic chatty down to earth yarn reviews. And Caitlin Zhang said, do you buy yarn online or in store? I do both. Um, a lot of times it kind of just depends on either the price, the coupons I can get, or like the availability. Um, there's a handful of new yarn listed on Joanne's website. Um, some of it is in store and available. And then some of it is online only. So I'm not going to do a trip to Joanne's just to get one kind of yarn and then have to order the rest. I'd rather just order it all online um, and pay like one flat fee for shipping. So yeah, it kind of just depends. And yeah, depending on like where you're shopping, whether it's Michael's or Joann's or if you're going to go in person or online, sometimes these spots only have coupons if you order online or you can only get a coupon if you go in store. So it kind of depends on availability, um, that as well. And then also there's a handful of yarns like on lovecrafts.com that there's nowhere for me to get that in person. So I have to kind of order it online. Like, sorry, it's very loud outside, but um, I'm trying to think of, there's like a bunch of different yarns I've been really interested, like I've been looking at online um, and no shops near me really have it. Like the Noro, the Noro yarn and what is like the King, King Cole yarn. And what else? There's a couple different yarns, but they don't, there's nowhere in person for me to like look at them. So I would have to like buy them online. Annie Dang. Hi, Annie. Love the new video ideas for the future. Yeah, I hope, I hope I'm not even, I hope. I'm just excited. I have a lot of things that I want to get done. It's just like prioritizing what comes out first. So happy to have you guys all here. Karina Roman. Yes. Yes, I will be making some home projects soon. Like I said, I got the Patrick cardigan coming out first. So that's going to prioritize everything because I need, I need to get that out. Like it's, it's time and I owe it to you guys. So that's coming out first. Um, I want to say, I definitely want to say in January, I will have, I want to say the first one. If you guys have ideas for home decor, DM me. Because if you like leave it here, I might miss it. But if you guys DM me or email me like with your ideas, I can like refer back to it later. But the two big things for home decor that I want to do, one are pillows. Um, I want to do like, what are they called? Just like decorative pillows. Um, and then another thing I want to do is plant covers slash plant cozies. Um, I also got a new plant a week ago. I can't show her to you because she's sitting in, in over over there right now. So cute. She's a, I don't remember what she's called. She's a philodendron scented. But she's like a heart-shaped leaf vine. She's so cute. But anyways, I now have two plants. I'm proud of myself. I'm a plant parent. And I want to make like crochet hanging pot covers and just crochet pot covers in general. Two really cute ways to spice up your home. Also, besides crochet, I would also like to, I already know how to do macrame. 
I don't know if you guys would like macrame because I know it's not the same as crocheting, but I feel like when it comes to like hanging plant covers, that macrame yarn is a lot sturdier. So I would prefer, or I would also like to add on like macrame just a little bit onto my channel. Um, Cause I feel like over time, depending on the kind of yarn that you use, your yarn might fray or break. And also kind of depending on how heavy your plant is, how heavy your pot is, and then the water that you're throwing in there, you know, I don't want like the yarn to break or, you know, so I would also like to do some macrame. Mm. Michaela said, happy early birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Greetings from Costa Rica. Sandra, Sandra, you're blue. I'm sorry. I'm like screaming. You have 50 plants. <coughs> 50? And I want more, but I'm trying to go slow so that I keep them alive because if I end up getting like 20, I will probably end up neglecting one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm going to get going because I'm starting to decline here and I need to take like a little nap and it's already four o'clock. I need to eat lunch. All right, I'm going to get going, guys, but thank you so much for coming in here last minute. Um, yeah, I'm just going to spend the rest of my day low key in bed, drinking tea, finishing this. I need to um, I need to continue to make this into a TikTok, not TikTok a reel. But yeah, um, new video is out tomorrow. So if you guys would like to watch my new video tomorrow and support me tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll be back on here before my birthday. And I'm hoping to have a new video schedule by this Sunday, hopefully Sundays and Wednesdays. A lot of exciting stuff coming. I have so much in my head right now. I'm going to like lose it. So many ideas. But yeah, I'm excited to get started on the merch. A lot of stuff coming. A lot of stuff. All right. Love you guys so much. We'll be talking very soon. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for me, anything, DM me, email me, tell me hello. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.